we met in the basement of the church through a group called Young People's Group, people that were married and were marriageable age. And Mary was my friend already. I knew his sister. Yeah, it was a very active uh, young people's group in St. Paul's, and uh, RCA had, as I just was saying, RCA had just gotten started out here, and there were a lot of young, uh, potentially, I guess you'd say, eligible young men working for RCA who would come here from, from other locations, and uh, someone, uh, two people, I won't, I won't mention any names, decided to establish a young people's group in St. Paul's with all these eligible young men wandering around, might as well take advantage of the social op opportunity. So uh, they started the group and it was very active uh, uh, for a, a number of years and there were interestingly quite a number of marriages came out of it ours being one. When we first started, we didn't start dating immediately. Uh, it was probably going on for, what, a year or so mm -hmm. before before we started dating. And uh, Really, the first date was a formal dance around Christmas time. And I guess he thought everybody else was planning it. How about us? So we went to a dance, and from then on, we dated a little until I got ill. I used to go on the bus just to Fort Wayne. Or we, mother would go with me on the bus or whatever. He was the only uh, qualified person in the whole territory. And uh, he was very good. One time, John called to see how I was doing and mom told me <laughs> and I think she told a little lie, I'm not sure. I think she said, I think he was crying. <laughs> I don't think he was. But um, <clears throat> I said, yes, I could go with him. Immediately I knew I could go with him. When I didn't want to go with anyone else. So boy, I got all cleaned up and dolled up and wore a good, nice dress and everything. And that was the real start right there. And then John and I dated quite a bit. He, he was so good to me. Taught me how to play baseball. Came over frequently so we could learn how to, so I could learn how to play baseball. That's where I made the mistake of getting her attached to the Chicago Cubs. That was my one big mistake. Because he liked the Reds. <laughs> I was getting better toward Christmas, and John got me a beautiful necklace and earring set that I'm told by a friend who worked in a jewelry store that it was worth quite a bit today. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, uh, from then on, we were dating very regularly, and somehow the subject of marriage came up, and I said, John, only if you make an appointment and talk to my doctor and see what he says. And apparently he said, go to it, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then after, in fact, even before he talked to the doctor, we bought a ring. I picked that out. He put it in his pocket and would not let me see it. From that, we went out to dinner afterwards. And I said, well, well John, where's my ring? And he said, never mind. So he pulls over into some kind of a parking lot. And this was in Fort Wayne. In Fort Wayne. And asked me to marry him. It sounds romantic, more romantic to say it was in a <laughs> municipal park rather than a parking oh, lot. Oh, was yes. it? Okay, a <laughs> municipal park. On the south side of Fort Wayne, yes. And, <laughs> and he asked me if I would marry him, and I said, John, I would love to. And that was true, I did, that's exactly how it went. So then he gave me the ring. 
and I had a ring when we went home. And the rest is history. Uh, we weren't elaborate. Uh, our family was not uh, fueled with the money <laughs> that it takes, but mother knocked herself out. Uh, she, see, she worked in the cafeteria, and the school kids, school girls were tickled to death. They had a big, they had a dinner, and they had tables set up and, and decorated, and the school girls had aprons that mother made for them, and uh, the women that had helped mother in the kitchen put the dinner together. Of course, Mother, I think, told them what to do, uh, but it was very nice. And Dad, he looked like a, a successful businessman. He was all dressed up. And you're talking about your dad. My dad. And uh, <laughs> we were quite uh, thrilled that he looked so sweet, and that he was a sweet man. But he also had his moments when he drank too much, but he didn't for our weddings. He was so good and walked us down the aisle, uh, we girls. <clears throat> and when I got there, John said something like, you look like a doll or something. <laughs> and, uh, but then that's it, we got married. We went to a place in Kentucky. Cumberland Falls, Kentucky, which is a state park. And we, uh... I thought it would be very relaxing. Well, instead, it was full of people a lot older than we were. And so it was kind of boring. Yeah, we stayed in the lodge, <laughs> the lodge at the, at the park for a couple of days. And being from a small family with only uh, really my in my, pretty much my memory, just my mother and sister and myself, uh, when I got overwhelmed by the Burr family with a mother and father and seven children, uh, it was an interesting experience to say the least. And it was always a very enjoyable experience because there was always something going on when you went to the Burr household. Uh, you always got a cup of coffee. Uh, that was a, a a routine. You didn't hardly show up without getting a cup of coffee, I think. That's probably where I started drinking coffee. And they had a piano and uh, used to sing, uh, play the piano. Television was just getting started. You finally got a television set at some place along the line. So it was mostly conversation sitting around. The Seely's mother was an excellent cook and uh, always had a big spread whenever there was a meal that I was involved with and that was always a lot of fun. And uh, the family uh, was very pleased with my choice of a husband <laughs> compared to other possibilities that existed before who weren't Catholic, but he was. <laughs> Dutch well, Kelly was always very pleased. He, he and Rita were already married, and he was, he said he was, he was pleased when I came along because Celie showed some interest in me, and and uh, he used to kid her about saying he was glad she finally decided to marry me because uh, uh, that might have been her last chance. 
and we found an apartment. Excuse me, I guess I found an apartment, and he was a little upset with me because he was out of town or something. I don't remember that. Yeah, oh good, forget it. <laughs> uh, but I was looking for something that was homey, gave you a homey feeling. And it was nice, except we didn't like the landlady. <clears throat> Jerry and Herman later lived there. But once we were married, uh, well, actually before, I, I'm saying to myself, I can't wait till we get a baby. And so once we got married, I tell you, I nagged and <laughs> Starting a family was a, high, was a very high priority with your mother at that time. <laughs> well, I was 30 when we got married, you know. I didn't want to waste time. <laughs> and yes, that's true. I, I was dying to have children. And I, I, can't, I can't go into detail what I would say, but it was a sort of a naggy. <laughs> like, let's get with it, type of thing. <laughs> we, we were just uh, quite pleasantly happy with, as you kids came along, I was always proud to be uh, pregnant. And that we had 21 years with no problems, essentially, right? Oh yeah. Uh, except the times when he, we'd hit each other. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and we were determined. We both had the same ideas of raising children. We loved our children very much. We taught, uh, treated them with a great deal of respect and love, lots of love. And, uh, well, you know, they were our treasures. And, uh, they, they just obeyed, didn't they? We didn't have to do much threatening or anything. Uh, we would probably get a little uh, tough occasion. No, no, this is not done. And you would, that was it. There's so many things to talk about. Uh, it's been a very good relationship. And I was telling John the other day, once in a blue moon, we would not agree about something. And we couldn't get it resolved before we went to bed. So for about two or three days, we didn't talk very much to each other. But then when it was cleared up and we both felt so bad that the marriage at that point was better than it ever had been after it, after we started talking and hugging and all that stuff. Hey, no, it doesn't seem like 50 years. No, you look, you know, it's easy to say 50 years, but you try to think about how could it possibly be 50 years, you know, but it, uh, time goes so fast when you're looking back on it mm -hmm. that you can't visualize uh, uh, the, uh, the involvement in activities raising a family uh, in over a 50-year period. No, it doesn't, to me, it, at least it doesn't uh, no, it, seem possible. Of course, as somebody said the other day, when you get to be elderly, you don't think of yourself as being as old as you are. No. Uh, you think of yourself as being maybe uh, 30 years younger or something. You Mentally, for the most part, you're like that, and probably that's a good deal because you've got a more uh, I, positive I, attitude. I say, how can a 42-year-old woman be using a cane? But no, it, it's been a, a great life, great life.